Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about the five things that I wish I knew when I started programming. So tip number one is sticking with one language and one tech stack. I think honestly, this is probably one of the most important advice I, I could give to new uh, software engineers. This one piece of advice will help you expedite your process very quickly. The engineer world has a lot of temptations. If you're if you're anything like me and you are very curious in different tech stacks and different languages and you just want to try building all these different stuff, then you're going <laughs> to you're going to start dabbling in all these different languages. That's what happened to me. So I first started in Java, made some Android apps, and then I went to Swift uh, trying to make iOS apps and then decided that I wanted to do a bootcamp and bootcamps, you know, they're all web. So uh, I studied Ruby because the bootcamp that I wanted to go to, you know, their main language was Ruby and JavaScript. So I learned Ruby and finally during my bootcamp, I poured all my energy into JavaScript and landed a job doing, you know, JS essentially. So when I look back and all the time that I spent learning Java and Swift and Ruby, they're not like entirely time wasted per se, but I would say that if I really wanted to expedite my process to become an engineer uh, much more quickly, I should have just studied JavaScript from the beginning. Of course, I probably didn't know that that's what I wanted to do. So I, I think it's fair to say, you know, give yourself like a, a month or two to dabble in different things, but eventually you should as quickly as possible settle down on one language, one tech stack, and dive really deep into it. So tip number two is working on projects rather than going through tutorials. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with tutorials per se, but I'm sure if you've done any amount of tutorials, you've kind of recognized this um, tutorial hell, I would like to call it. It's, it's, it's when you start a project following a tutorial and as soon as you finish that tutorial or the content of that tutorial, you have no idea what to do next to grow your um, project. And this is mainly the case because tutorials is almost like seeing a cheat sheet the whole time you're programming. It gives you a false sense of accomplishments and your skills. So you really want to be careful about like just blindly consuming tutorials. You, you should be using tutorials more to get a general gist of how to do things, but you actually have to take that knowledge and build your own project with it. And that's really how you fully grasp something new. Also, the other benefits of working on projects is obviously you get portfolio pieces after you finish your project and that would have really helped me when I started interviewing. Luckily, I won a bunch of hackathons so I was able to use those as kind of projects um, because you know if you win a hackathon you could kind of just put it as like a project one like pro tip is that hackathons are great ways to boost your resume when you don't have anything to write about I personally didn't ha have any relevant work experience I worked as a program manager for five years before in regards to programming I had like absolutely nothing except for my bootcamp so uh, my resume my entire resume and I have a video on like uh, my resume breakdown but my entire resume was just my three hackathon wins and the technology that I use with it. Tip number three is somewhat related to the previous tip but it's basically understanding the importance of GitHub. Now GitHub is just one of those things that you end up having to use. The thing is there's different levels of GitHub and when I first started out I treated GitHub as just a place to put my code so that I could pull down in different computers and you know, that's about it. I really didn't understand why I needed version control, what is version control, and um, what good versioning strategies actually are. I wish I spent some more time learning about GitHub and then understanding version control better so I could follow those like proper good practices for version control when I started learning how to program. I actually ended up deleting, I would say 90%, more than that, like 99% of my GitHub repos while I was learning. Thing is, I, you know, all of that was really messy and I did not want to show that to my future employer. So right now it's, it's pretty empty. I just have a few like pieces of work there and I, I don't really have that much on my GitHub anymore because all my work now is done in my enterprise corporate GitHub account. So 
that's one thing I really wish I did well uh, from the beginning because then I could just you know maintain that and just continue on so yeah I highly encourage you to really care about your github and you know every imagine that every piece of work that you put on your github profile is a like a piece on your resume it's like a detailed version of your resume so care about your github um, branch names care about your github commit messages you know all of that stuff oh your readme's just you know take care with your github tip number four is something that i really wish i did earlier because it would have helped me improve much more quickly i think you know there's this saying that you don't know what you don't know and i don't know who said it but it's definitely true you really don't know what you don't know so tip number four is i should have seeked out code reviews from professionals a lot earlier it wasn't until like i started interviewing and i had some take home uh take home tests i asked my friends to like kind of code review it for me but i wish i did that earlier in my code uh, in my learning you know if i had like some kind of project um, I wish I kind of asked them to take a look at my code and, you know, give me some feedback earlier because the first code review that I received from my friend, I learned so much. I, I just realized that I was just doing things incorrectly or inefficiently. So code reviews, you really don't realize this when you're working full time, but code reviews are a great source of learning because that's one place where someone is critically looking at your work and everyone has always something to contribute and I'm always even now I'm always learning something new when I'm either doing code reviews or you know getting code reviews so it's you know it's hard to get code reviews but one of my suggestions is go to meetups and you know try to form like a group where you guys are you know reviewing each other's code and usually during meetups there's you could probably find someone that is you know very helpful and also like already a professional but yeah just seeking out code reviews earlier i think i really wish i knew that when i first started finally my final fifth tip this is really more of a personal thing but i really wish that i kind of believed in myself earlier historically in my in my schooling essentially i i just never got good grades for whatever reason i sucked at tests and uh, I hated doing homework and all these kind of like things that come with school, I just really disliked and I didn't do that well. But when it came to programming, I just kind of fell in love with it and learning about data structures and algorithms, learning about design patterns or system design, like all these like things that goes into building, you know, awesome software, I find all of that absolutely fascinating. And I, I'm really blessed and lucky that I get to do this every day uh, for a living. But for the longest time, I thought I was just not smart enough, you know? Um, I remember the first time that I gave up how to program and it was um, when I first started Java. Even till this day, when I look back, I don't recommend Java as like a first language because there's a lot of things that you don't really absolutely need to know right away, you know, especially like the strongly typed nature of Java. All of that, I think is really great to know, but in the beginning, it should just be something more simple. So Python, for example, is a great language to start, or even JavaScript is not that bad. But yeah, I just really wish I, I was smart enough to do this. Um, it would have like helped me, I think I would have done that transition like earlier. I, I remember when I was talking to my buddy about whether or not I should do a boot camp or not. And this friend of mine was a self-taught. And the thing is, he has always been like the smartest guy I've ever known. You know, his head is like humongous. I always thought that his brain capacity was extremely large. And you know, he always had like straight A's and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, so he, he was actually my original inspiration to become a software engineer because I saw him do it, basically going from nothing, um, studying for a year, uh, and then becoming a software engineer, you know, making games, like mobile games. But I remember trying to do his same path where I studied Java, but I just couldn't get it and I just gave up. And, but the one thing is I just kept at it. You know, I just kept going back. I tried different things and I guess I'm just stubborn <laughs> to a fault maybe, but 
I wish I believed in myself a little bit earlier. So I still have this like stigma of, you know, doing bad in school where, you know, like if you do bad in school, maybe you're not as smart. But one thing I'm slowly like kind of realizing now is that school is just a small portion of your life. And, it, and you know, not even school, but like just anything that you failed in the past shouldn't be a factor to who you are today. And any kind of those like negative emotions or negative thoughts that you have um, going into this, it's just more of a hindrance than anything. But yeah, so that's kind of just where I am right now. But I definitely wish I believed in myself earlier because I think I would have transitioned much, much earlier. I probably didn't actually need to go to my boot camp. That was just kind of me having this, like dealing with my insecurities at the time as well because I thought I, I, I needed to do it. In hindsight, I think the boot camp was still a good thing because I made you know lifelong friends and also the connections that you get from a boot camp is kind of invaluable in your career path. Anyways, those are the five things that I wish I really knew before I started programming. I hope this helps you guys, you know, shorten that path just like even a few years, that'd be great. Um, I know that I know a bunch of people that have done this like entire transition in like six months to a year. So it's definitely possible. You know, you just gotta believe in yourself, practice every day and show up. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.